I saw you guys waving me over. It's... My feeling feminine just doesn't depend on the size of the person that I'm f***ing. That's racism! I'll say that in the words if you have fun, that it got bleep. So help me God, Chris Getz, and I'll burn this whole show down. <laughs> God damn, New York fucking city. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of CGPP, where we're not the actual CGP podcast. We just talk about the artists who are going to be on CGP this week, the week of its release. I'm Emily Pineapple. And I'm Forrest, the keeper of the NARP Carns. Yeah. They're gnarly to the Carn. They are extremely gnarly to the Carn. Uh, everyone should watch Mary Houlihan's episode of CGP, Enchanted Pumice. It was incredible. And now we're going to be talking about uh, something even even as incredible, more incredible, because they're a person rather than a show, and people are more incredible than individual things, right? Yeah, the people are way better than things, for sure. Yeah. Um, and this her person we've already seen on CGP because she's Rachel Pegram. Yeah, she and Joe Rumrell took us to chemistry class early in the CGP run, and now... On episode 204, she'll teach us how to be elegant with the Elegance Hour. And it's going to air on September 25th, 2019 with cast members Becky Ciccone? Ciccone? Do you know how to say that? Well, Gatsby doesn't either. Thank you for that, Gatsby. Um, But yeah, she's an actor and writer who is part of Girls with Brown Hair Comedy, along with Sam Reese. Sam Reese. Reese. We know that one. I think Reese. There's an E at the end of it. Just like Reese's Pieces. Uh, Sam Reese is a comedian, writer, and actor who is also part of Girls with Brown Hair Comedy, and along with Becky Chikion, created the Comedy Central digital series Shop Talk. There's also Rachel Jorovsky, uh, and Rachel and Rachel were both part of NYU comedy troupe Hammercats. In addition, they both perform as part of Lo-Fi NYC and co-run the show That Shit Ray, which you can hear on the Earwolf Presents podcast feed, where you can also hear the actual CGP podcast with like Chris Gethard and and Rachel Pegram. Yeah, and Rachel Pegram and Justin Linville and all sorts of great guests. Yeah. Um, and then the last member of the cast that's been announced, there were more was promised, uh, is Maya Deshmukh, who is an actor on UCB Mod Night and is part of the Asian pop comedy, which describes themselves as the first Asian American K-pop parody band. I love that. Yeah, I really, I really want to watch oh their God. stuff. That sounds amazing. Um, this is now a Maya Deshmukh podcast. No. Uh-huh. Rachel Pegram, who we're really excited to talk about, and we're really excited before uh, we started getting into our, like, 15 things format of this podcast, we were like, oh, we're just going to talk about these people's careers. So we spent a very long time doing a very long episode about both Joe Rumrell and Rachel Pegram, and so I was really excited to get to go back in and devote, like, the entire week of research to just her, and... uh and, and see some more excellent things that she's done individually. Yeah, yeah I'm really excited for it because, yeah, on, this, on that past episode, we split it. Yeah, we split it. And, yeah. But, yeah, Rachel Pegram is from uh, is a Brooklyn-based comedian, actor, and writer. She was born and raised in Denton, Texas, and moved to NYC to attend NYU Tisch, where she received her BFA in drama on screen. Rachel can be uh, seen in the Adam Sandler Netflix movie, The Week Of, alongside Chris Rock and Rachel Dratch. And we watched that whole movie. It's true. We did. We watched the whole movie. If you want to see more Rachel Pegram just on things, you don't have to see that movie. I'm. That's the spoiler alert about that movie. <laughs> you don't have to watch that movie to see any more of her because you're not going to see very much of her. She's criminally underutilized. I think. I agree. She she's also one of the best parts of the movie. Oh, she's a great she's great in the movie. <laughs> Being a very small part of it. Um, she also appeared in the movie Don't Think Twice along with Chris Gethard. And for television, she's been on the Chris Gethard show, Full Frontal with Samantha B, The Late Late or The Late Show, Alternatino, MTV, BET, Comedy Central, and more. 
Rachel was chosen in 2019 as one of the Just for Laughs New Faces characters. In 2018, she performed at Clusterfest as one of Comedy Central's Up Next Variety comedians. Rachel performs regularly at Union Hall, both as a writer and performer with the sketch group Lo-Fi NYC, and as co-host of That Shit Ray, a monthly late-night-esque variety show. She's also a regular performer on Ass Cat at UCB Hell's Kitchen. And then Rachel's frequent collaborators include Alex Song, who was also part of Hammercats with Rachel, and has appeared with Rachel in videos for UCB Comedy, as well as in the Netflix film The Week Of. Who was she in The Week Of? She was the best friend. Who, like, the, not the best friend, the friend who comes in from out of town and, and sleeps with the next door neighbor at the oh, end. Oh, that woman. Yeah. yeah, she's in a number of the sketches. We spent like an hour and a half of our lives watching this Adam Sandler movie on Netflix, made for Netflix movie. Yep. Yeah, we did. We did. Now, luckily now, we were sick as we currently are right now when yeah. you're hearing this, so... Or when you're at least when we're recording it. Hopefully we've recovered if you're listening to this like three years from now. But <laughs> still sick. We still got that yeah, cold. We still got a cold. The common cold took us down forever. 2019 summer cold, which lasted three years. <laughs> <laughs> we watched that movie. Her other collaborators are all of Lo-Fi NYC. Uh, it is a monthly sketch show, and you can see something that they call the pilot, quote unquote, on YouTube, which is a bunch of their sketches put together in addition to, like, more sketches just online. Um, I think it wasn't the long one on Vimeo. It might may I have think the been. long, like, full pilot is on Vimeo. Yeah. But we can include that link as well. Yes. Um, and... The cast of Lo-Fi NYC, there are Kevin Bauer, Sage Boggs, Karen Chi, Matt DeCaro, Ayo Edabiri, Noah Gebstalt, Taylor Gonzalez, Jenny Guftisson. Gustafson. Gustafson. I There was a person in my childhood who had that last name. Oh, really? And I still can't say it. <laughs> uh, Rachel Jarovsky who I remember because it sounds like Swarovski. Swarovski, Swarovski the diamond, the, yeah, the, the crystal crystals. people. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Nemo, Rachel Pegram, woo! David Ra- Rafa, it... help me, I'm sick. I'm sick too, but Raphael, Raphael this? I think I apologize if we're mispronouncing any names in yeah. this episode also. Yeah, we... we're... We're both off our game and yeah. not good at pronouncing things yeah. anyways. And so we apologize yeah. for that and we'll accept corrections. Absolutely. Um, Blythe Roberson and Bob Volfov. Volfov. Um, and Rachel is, as mentioned in her bio, a regular performer on Ask Cat at, LC, at UCB. Yeah, wow, that was a lot of letters that came out of my mouth there. At UCB Hell's Kitchen. And Shannon O'Neill and Connor Ratliff are also regulars at Ask Cat. Yeah, so it, overall, a pretty good week being sick and watching Rachel Pegram do things. It was definitely, it's nice. It was nice that, yeah, you know, made, made being sick pass a lot better. Yeah, and like I'm not saying that watching Rachel Pegram do things definitely cures all illnesses. I'm just saying that I think maybe Pfizer has a, a word into why she doesn't have a TV show yet. I mean, laughter is the best medicine, of course. And we laughed a lot and learned a lot and loved a lot <laughs> watching her comedy. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about that comedy, things that you can see of her before you watch her CGP episode or maybe after you see her CGP episode and you're like, wow, that chick is amazing. I want to see more things of her. Well, behold, here are some Things that we loved of hers. Fifteen of them, in fact. Indeed. The first one, despite us saying see quite a bit, is a podcast. <laughs> no, she, she's on a number of But it's also a podcasts. live show. Yeah. No, but we're, yeah, we're highlighting a number of podcasts in this. The first one is That Shit Ray, which, as mentioned, is Rachel Pegram and Rachel Jarofsky. And it's usually a live show. Yeah. Um, at Union Hall. Yeah. I think, which Every she month described. at Union Hall. We're not in New York, uh, but she described it as a more like low-key theater where she prefers to have that show because 
she feels that there's less of that like pressure that you get at the the Hell's Kitchen UCB theater. Which that makes feels, sense. It feels very Chris Gethard to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, also just we've seen a lot of a number of UC or sorry, a number of uh, Union Hall shows in doing this research. Yeah, that's and true. so I think I think Union Hall is definitely a must see place when you're visiting New York if you're a Gethard. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, this is the podcast version of it. You can listen to it on the Earwolf Presents podcast yes. feed, where the what thirteen episodes of the actual CG yeah. podcast uh, still are. <laughs> the opening is magnificent. They do a sketch for everyone with Lil Scrappy and Thrifty Cleopatra. Yeah, they're two grown women who are newsies. Yeah, and it's it's really funny. Uh, the podcast is about the hustle. Mm-hmm. Some of the questions they talk about are, what's the hardest you've hustled? And how do you recover from the hustle? And they talk to guest star Sam Taggart. Wow, Chef Sam Taggart, a.k.a. Roger from Enchanted Pumice? It's Sam Taggart. Wow. Who's been on CGP about as many times as Justin Linville. <laughs> I think he's been on at least the, the MNN version exactly as many times as Justin Linville. Which is amazing. Two. Yeah. Uh, Rachel talks about how she would uh, do comedy, work at a cupcake shop, and did uh, psychological studies about unconscious bias and stuff for cash, Um, which I I was in the psych department, actually, at school, and we just got class credit, but we could have gotten money if we didn't need the class credit. So that's not a bad way to get some dollars if you're looking for them. She also regularly participated in class action lawsuits online. I kind of want to Google this shit now. Apparently, you just Google if there's class action lawsuits and you can just sign up for them because like they're not going to make you prove things. It's like, oh, did you buy what what was her example? Puffins? It was puffins. And I mean, honestly, probably. Yeah. It's like, did you buy puffins in the past two years? Like, could you have possibly been affected by the like lead and asbestos that they put in there i don't know but obviously she got fifty dollars obviously you should only do the ones you were actually affected by <laughs> excuse me for for my coughing but yeah the rachels met at uh hammer cats at nyu mm-hmm. and clearly created beautiful lasting friendships yeah yeah so. i also liked and on that podcast sam told a story when he was a human google alert for coca-cola mm-hmm. and definitely check it out for that as well yeah Oh, yeah. Sam Taggart fans, jump on in there. Uh, Our our second thing is Bachelorette Party, which is a Hammercat sketch where Rachel is in it and plays the Bachelorette at a party where the stripper keeps ruining the mood. Yep. By saying the word wiener. Yeah, he keeps saying wiener. Like to refer to his junk. To refer to his junk and try to be like sexy. But he just keeps saying, who wants to see my wiener? Mm -hmm. It's really good. There's more to it than that. But definitely check out that sketch. It was really funny. And Rachel's great in it. Very great. Uh, our third thing is Mary Fuck Kill, which is a lo-fi sketch that she wrote. Rachel wrote this one. She performed in it. The video that you can see of this online, it's both in the pilot and as its own just independent like sketch that you can see on YouTube. Um, it's a game where everyone's at a sleepover party and a game of Mary Fuck Kills goes awry. Uh, when one of the options is her own father. Yeah, this sketch is really funny, and I can definitely hear Rachel's voice in it. And she co-wrote it with Rachel Jarowski and Blythe Robertson. Mm-hmm. But I definitely hear Rachel yeah. Pegram's voice in it. It's it's her brand of like off kilter, like dark, but also like light. Like the topic is like a little weird and like kind of dark, but it's always delivered in this very sunny way. Like, way? It's, Does it's that make sense? childlike wonder that always comes back to kinky sex. Yeah, that's a better way of putting it than I put it. Yeah. And I appreciate that as as a woman who, who appreciates that kind of blue comedy. Um, I appreciate her playing with the benign violation of all the things that women get to say and doesn't sound as creepy. It's really, <laughs> really funny. Uh-huh. Speaking of benign violations, our fourth video is Rom Complicated, which was a video for Hatched, where Maya Sharma, who's Justin Linville's co-host on the CGP podcast, plays Karen the therapist. 
and Rachel Pegram plays Jenny, the black character who white people are comfortable with because she's been written devoid of cultural and political baggage. That's her own self-description in the video. Yeah. And it's like a, it's a group for like support characters from rom-coms. Yeah. So there's all the various types of best friends that the lead romantic interest has. One, of course, being the like black friend, of course, who is in no way connected to blackness so that yeah. they can be consumed. And that's Jenny. <clears throat> there is also like the gay best friend. And then there's like exhibition bot, essentially a woman who like can't help but like keep like just providing exhi- oh, yeah. ex- exhibition. Is that the word? Yeah, exhibit like exhibitionism. And, I'm so yeah. sick. No, it's exhibitionism. Forced. I'm like, are they different things? No, no, no that, that's the word you're looking for. Okay, thank you. But that one is very fun. Definitely would recommend. And then, honestly, one of my favorites. The only reason there's not a quote from this in the beginning is because there was like there's music underneath the whole thing. Yeah, this um, was also one of my favorites. Total Moisture Plus. A sketch written and directed by Rachel. And Rachel's also in it yes. very prominently. Yes. It is uh, her fabulous invention of a hair product for black women that not only uh, keeps your hair looking shiny and beautiful, but burns anyone who tries to touch your hair. Just burns the I fuck love out it. of them. I love it. Um, mm-hmm. And this sketch also includes X Mayo, who is in the chemistry class episode of CGP as the comedian who went on a date. One of the comedians, the comedian very early on who went on a date on that episode was her, and she's in the sketch. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and it's it's, a, it's just a very funny sketch. Yeah. It's so good. Again, it, it's her sort of style of, like, this is all, like, really nice and heartwarming and straightforward and cute, and now we're going to burn your fucking hands off. Exactly, yeah. And all like, the, the testimonials are so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the next one is uh, Mission to Zix, which we've highlighted before because Riley Soliner was on it. This is an improv podcast that is set in a, honestly, it's much more like a Farscape than a Star Trek. Yeah, I would agree with that. And for those of you who don't know, Star, uh, sorry, Farscape, the hit 90s science fiction show from the Jim Henson company. Jim Henson, that <laughs> puppet guy, a sci-fi show? What? No, just get this. I'm sorry. I'm a big, like, I stand for Farscape. Farscape was my life. I loved it. It was amazing. It was about a bunch of criminals, essentially. They were on a prison ship, a ship, a living ship, and they all broke out of their cells. At the same time, an astronaut from Earth, like, got shot through a wormhole, and he ended up in their space. So they grab his ship, and he comes on the ship, and then it's, it's this escape and then like there's a pilot and he's connected to the ship and they have to like go through the galaxy like so mission to zix is kind of like that there's also a really good episode of farscape that's all a cartoon yeah with the astro nut food so check that one out at the very least yeah so uh a mission to zix much like that episode is a very (laughs) funny parody of the conventions of the space Sort of space opera kind of genre in a lot of ways. Yeah, next on Talk and Farscape. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I went off way too far on that. But yeah, Mission to Six, very fun. They go to a planet that uh, where something kind of weird is going on. There's not many people around. And they, they go to try and meet with, uh, you know, the magistrate or whoever is the magistrate of, of this area um, to try and help get them to join a war. And who is that person but Rachel Pegram as Grandma? She plays. Uh, She's the city Randy. councilwoman who was elected on the Get Disappeared platform. Yeah, the Got Disappeared. Got Disappeared platform. Sorry. Yeah. Got Disappeared. It's really platform. funny. It's so fun. She gives a whole like political speech at the end. Yeah. She just appears and like goes for it. It's great. She is fantastic. It's a type of um, improv that I haven't seen her do in any of yeah. the other, like, things that, that we have been able to find of hers. It was a lot more absurd. It definitely went into the, like, sort of sci-fi realm of things. And I think that these are all things that she has in her heart, um, as she says in Black People Contain Multitudes. Yeah. 
which is a song that we're going to talk about later. She likes Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And Doctor Who. And Doctor Who. Yeah. So I definitely see like the running theme of like just a little sci-fi throughout, but I really want to see that 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 muscle flexed. I want to see her her broad sci-fi shoulders. Yeah. Flexing like the broad masculine shoulders of a ghost serial killer. Oh, here we um, go. We have sorry. to make a last victim reference every episode now. <laughs> He's so huge. He's just giant, but apparently. I would love to see, uh, you know, if she decides she wanted to do a whole sci-fi themed episode of CGP or some other like sci-fi uh, d- driven sh- show, I would love that. Yeah. I would be a huge fan because I mean, obviously it would be great. And even going more into to goofiness, it reminds yeah. me of, um, I don't know if it was a Vulture article that she was talking in or some, some article she was being interviewed in online. Someone asked her if her comedy is political. And she was like, well, like, I'm a black woman who exists and therefore my existence is political. Um, but yeah, that was the... That was a vulture comedy mm-hmm. article from 2018 called Rachel Pegram Loves Commenting on Life. Yeah. Written by Karen Chi, actually, from Lo-Fi NYC. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that. Um, but, yeah, and she says that, like, yeah, of course, but, like, sometimes she just wants to be a goofball, like all those, like, white boys. White boys just get to be goofballs. Yeah, I mean, it. it it's... It is like a very true statement that there's a lot more. We're asking more yeah. of comedians who are of color, who are of non-male gender identities. Like we're asking more of them to comment on the world and like their perspective. And I think that that's like, it's it's fine to want that. Right. Like that's what makes comedy beautiful is when like more people are giving their perspectives and stuff. Yeah. But... I don't want to forget that amazing science fiction and just bullshitting comes from people as well. No, I mean, I think it's true that like, it's great. Like if if you're, you know, a non cishet white dude, it's great if you want to comment on that identity and incorporate that identity, but you shouldn't, I don't know. It's it's more of what people ask of, I feel like this is the I don't, okay, I have all these feelings about who gets, like, HBO specials and who gets, you know, TV shows and who gets their pilots picked up. It's less about what individual fans want and what people are putting out and more about what that weird, like, wall that stands in between most of the people who are on CGP and who are amazing, like, people who are on CGP, like, are at. But they're not allowed to cross for yeah. no goddamn reason. No, to clarify, I meant that what I was talking about was also that. Was that like yeah. executive wall? Yeah. Not like, you know, because that's the thing that blocks people from pe- getting yeah. awesome TV shows. And that's why it's great that Chris has completely gone around it, like yeah. he talked about in the first episode yeah. of CGP, and made it an opportunity for far more people. Yeah, to just do whatever the fuck they yeah. want. Um. So yeah. Also, I just like sci-fi and and I like Rachel. I mean, yeah, that's I the like other reason. Reference science fiction. Yeah. I'm that... like, Ooh, do the irreverent science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make requests for your comedy? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was like, well, if she wants to do it, it would be great. Yeah, that's true. She might not have this like driving need to create uh, her own farscape. Um, <laughs> But I would be there, Rachel. If someone tells you about this, I would I would watch every episode of your farscape. Uh-huh. Another video you should watch is our seventh thing, which is Up Next, Making Table Friends. And Up Next was a Comedy Central miniseries where comedians, including Chef Sam Taggart and Lorelai Ramirez, they played Preston on Coochie Creek, and Rachel Pegram were given the chance to do short sketches. And in Rachel's sketch, she plays a waitress who just really wants to be her patron's best friends. She's incredibly awkward in this video. She's very incredible at playing awkward yeah and yeah. really owning that and playing awkward is a lot harder to do than being awkward yeah she's it's, she's really good at incorporating that awkwardness into her comedic persona in a way that is um that isn't alienating like it's yeah. like it's that thing where it's 
you it's it's very effective cringe because yeah. you're like I like everyone in who's involved in this scenario, but they're all being horribly awkward right now. Yeah, and it's just awkward cringe rather than like why the hell is that person getting away with that cringe? Yeah. Um, which is something else that's interesting. But um, I thought that she was super great in this sketch and I loved her body language because like basically these people are sitting like in a circle table yeah. at like a restaurant and she just comes and like slides along the oh, back yeah. <laughs> of it. Like, oh, hey, oh, hey, you guys. Oh, my God, we totally bonded. No, I love her. I love that one. Number eight, we wanted to talk about her work with Above Average. She does uh, three different reaction video parodies with Above Average that we were able to find. Um, watch these people watch other people play with puppies. Turkeys try Thanksgiving foods. And vampires try human foods. They were all really good. The turkeys try Thanksgiving foods was so wonderfully dark because it's turkeys being brought turkeys and being horrified that their friends are what we're eating on Thanksgiving. Yeah, because they're they're dressed in like yeah. hammy turkey outfits, but then they're brought cooked turkey and just like start screaming, essentially. Um, she takes her turkey. She's like, I feel like this person is mine now. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to take them and like bury them. Um and in Vampires Try Human Food, she had a quote that I really liked. Mm. When the spaghetti was brought out, all the vampires assumed that the tomato sauce was blood. And she said, you know, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably blood. <laughs> and I really, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, she's just, she's so good in all of these. The the watching people watch other people play with puppies is great because they it's not a person watching a person play with a puppy on a video it's a person in a room with someone else playing with the puppy and there's like a bouncer like physically restraining them from playing with the puppy i loved that twist because i definitely <laughs> thought it was going right? to be them watching it on a screen and having it be in person and a bouncer being like no no you don't get to play with the puppies is just it's just so physically good physically dragging them out yeah it's fantastic number um, nine when- i think Number nine is m- one of my favorite videos of this entire project. This was really doing. good. This was a really good video. And as soon as we knew Rachel was coming back, we knew we had to highlight this one again because it's just so funny. And she's so funny in it. Another uh, above average joint joint with Rachel Pegram. Yeah, yes, like... She got top billing now, but she should have. <laughs> when you find out your boyfriend is short, because being short is the worst thing a man could do. It, I mean, that's just known. Yeah. Um, feeling feminine does depend on the size of the person you're fucking, but not for her because she plays Brittany, um, who is the friend of the person who's dating a short guy, who's like the lesbian of the group or yeah. whatever. Um, and that's and, where the clip yeah. from the intro is from. Yeah. Um, about feeling feminine. There's a great line that she has. Um, They're like, oh, my gosh, like, can he put your chin or his chin (laughs) over your head? Which I thought was funny because that is an explicit, like, description of Garland, the ghost serial killer. Oh. In those those romance novels. Yeah. Like, specifically, Charlie at one point is like, she forgot how tall he was. Her head just came up to the bottom of his chin. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's a video. Oh, my God. Um, So, yeah, it it's great. Um, They call out a guy for being short, like just who's walking by and his girlfriend's like, oh, my God, I didn't realize. You really got to see this. Yeah, one. it's really good. Um, Number 10 is Scary Lucy, which is a oh. really cool animated video. Which was written by Rachel and is about the creepy Lucille Ball statue that they put up to honor her. And it's being replaced. It's been, it's now been replaced. But at the time it was being replaced. And so it's the original like. Is this based on a real thing that happened? (gasps) No, this is a real thing. Um, There was a scary Lucille Ball statue. Like it just looked ugly. Yeah. In a park. And then they switched it with a nicer one. Oh, yeah. Because it was in, um, it was in like her hometown. Oh, in Delton? In Celeron. 
Celeron. Uh, wow, that's a sci-fi name for a town in Texas. Yes, yeah. and it, it, they they legit replaced the statue. You can see it on my screen, listeners. You'll have to Google it. Oh, but wow, yeah, no, she the was original, much scarier. The original one is much scarier and looks far less like Lucille Ball. And so in this video, the scary one is like pleading with them not to remove it and claiming that she is Lucy. And like she starts eating chocolate because it's coming out of the machine too fast and like She's reenacting like, oh, all these great chocolate. Lucy. I love Lucy sketches. Ricky, I'll sing for you. <laughs> and so like as someone who grew up watching I Love Lucy on TV land, this just like struck home for me. I loved this video so much. It, it peaks. It's like deep into uh, Rachel's absurdism. Yeah. Which brought me joy. Um, it's animated by Tom McDonald. Yeah, and well. it, I like the animation style. It's cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, number 11, this fucking city, which I've started saying every time I like see an annoying San Francisco thing <laughs> and like no one gets it. And they're like, Emily, why are you doing a weird accent that we can't identify because you're bad at accents? Yeah. Um, Rachel Pegram and Rachel Jarofsky uh, perform bits about New York City. It's like a parody of the 80s. Yeah, because it's very just like it's very it's a great parody of like observational comedy and all the group like mundane grievances about New York City being take treated as like these great bits. Yeah, just like, oh, I couldn't sleep because of the sirens all night. And then I was going to get. Brunch. And it being so catchphrase driven is another reason it's such a great like 80s stand up boom parody. Mm -hmm. And it's really excellent. Check it out. It's also in the pilot. Yeah. Lo fi. This pilot. was part of lo fi. Um, yeah. And done on the lo fi stage. And the number 12 is in the world of the film. Rachel <laughs> wrote this Hammercats video, uh, which is just really good. It's and Alex really Song good. is also in this one. It's um, the stories, it's, it's two individuals trying to to uh, sell TV concepts to a bunch of executives. It's the stories of what other characters are doing in popular established works. Like what were people doing in The Great Gatsby who didn't attend Gatsby's party? They just kind of stayed home yeah. in, in one of their apartments and chilled. And what were the hobbits in the Shire doing who didn't really know Frodo and hung behind when he went off on his adventures with Samwise and the Fellowship? Uh, Gotham citizens who hear some of Batman's adventures but do not interact. They specifically hear an explosion. They're like, what's that? Batman. It's like probably Batman. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. My cat just decided to jump into the microphone. Um, and other denizens of the Day After Tomorrow uh, universe. Yeah. Yeah. Who just see Dennis Quaid running by. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get that one. So that, do you know the movie? No. It's a movie where climate change causes like a massive disaster, like a second ice age and the world freezes over and mm. then they go on adventures to reverse it. Uh. I think reverse it or just survive it. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. I just remember the poster. That's like the Statue of Liberty's hand coming out of ice. Well, you know, that's too sad. Let's talk about <laughs> number 13 is Black People Contain Multitudes, which is the musical number that we mentioned earlier. Um, she's at I think Union Hall. Yeah, that's Union Hall. Uh doing a doing a bit of a song. She starts scatting, which is hilarious. Oh yeah, that was really good. And talks about all of the different types of black people that there are, including herself. She likes Doctor Who was greatly influenced by Neil Patrick Harris, which is embarrassing for her, but it's okay. She can like that. <laughs> you know? It's about how black people are just as varied as white people. <laughs> and, um, oh my God. It's really funny. Bitch can sing. She can sing also, so well. Also, she said it at one point that people were uh, thought that she was going to go into musical theater. They were really surprised when she went into comedy. Oh, yeah. That was on a podcast. Yeah. I don't remember which podcast. Um, but speaking of podcasts, she was very good on Mary Houlihan's Lowell podcast, specifically the episode Three Little Chickies, number three, which is a musical improv episode. It's extremely cute. It It's like a... Hangout style podcast uh, where their conversation keeps turning into musical numbers. Yeah. And she is a great one about how Monday is her favorite day of the week. 
Yeah, that was a good one. And Sunday is her least favorite day of the week. It's my least favorite day of the week. Sunday? I think Sunday. I agree with Garfield. That he hates Mondays? Yeah, Mondays are my least favorite. Well, Rachel Pegram loves Mondays. Except for Mondays, this podcast. So. <laughs> um, yeah, they talk about vacations and outlet malls. And it's really fun seeing her do musical improv. I wonder if she does it live places. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if she had done the live version of Three Little Chickies because she's just, she's great at it. Yeah, that's true. And then number 15 of our list of 15 favorite things, the tampon commercial presented by men. 2014. (sighs) It is a tampon commercial as if it were written by men, but it was actually written by Rachel Pegram and seven other people. Um, and she is in it. It's a Hammer Cats video. Uh, the, <laughs> and she, she talks about how she needs something dependable. Um, Tampax is perfect for when tiny eggs come out of her vagina covered in blood and she needs something to scoop them up and put them back inside of her body so she can have babies someday. <laughs> I loved this video. Oh my god, it was just brilliant. They go into a lot of great, like, vaginal-related horror gore. Well, more like period-related horror gore. Yeah. Like, not even horror gore. Just like... Gross-out gore. Absurd gross-out gore. Which I love. Which is great. It's all queefs and fart jokes, but vaginas and periods, which are so funny. Yeah. It's so funny. There's blood, and it's gross, and it smells bad, and... There's all of these hilarious things that people have been able to joke about butts and balls for years. No, Vaginas no. are so much funnier. That's why there's less uh, pussy related <laughs> jokes. Men fear us. They fear how much funnier our genitalia is. But yeah, those are our, our 15 things. And we do have some additional info, essentially of like hour long things we watched because we thought she might be in them. Yeah. And then she- she was in like a scene. Um, so we watched Fiddler on the Rooftop Bar, which is a parody of Fiddler on the Roof. This is on YouTube. And uh, I mean, it was a great parody. It almost goes beat by beat through Fiddler on the Roof. And I've seen Fli- Fiddler on the Roof like a lot of times, like a lot, a lot of times. <laughs> and I worked backstage for like a elementary school production oh, wow. of it too. Yeah. Um, so she's she's in it uh, for like a minute as uh, a skateboarder and a king of karaoke. Um, so she like kind of sings a song at the wedding. There's a scene at the wedding after the sunrise sunset song where the Cossacks come and they're like, rah, pogrom time. Rah, rah. And so yeah. she she's playing a Cossack essentially. Um, but as a karaoke person, which is very funny. Carmen Christopher is in yeah, it. Yeah, he's funny in it. He's in he's in more of it, but he's really funny in it. He plays a uh, Perchek, who is trying to get people to register to vote. Um, he's the equivalent of, I think his name was Perchek in. Oh well, that would make in sense. Fiddler, um, the scholar that yeah. comes and is all like Marxist, so he plays a Bernie bro. Um, and, and then John Wan, who yeah. is in Mary Houlihan's CEO Skyscraper, plays Shava Haim, who's one of the... Chava. Hi- Chava Haim. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, it's everybody. It's the only, like, like, types of names I can actually pronounce. Chava Haim. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know those one of the, ones. Who's one of the sisters in Haim. Yeah. And they're the equivalents of the daughters in the original Fiddler. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They play his tenants. It's really cute. It's really cute. And Definitely check it out if if you like Fiddler on the Roof. Uh just fucking watch it. It's great. And it's it was brought to you by the creators of Handmaid's Tale the Musical, Marsha Belsky and Melissa Stokowski. Mm-hmm. So check it out. Yeah. And then we also watch, as you mentioned, The Week of, where Rachel plays Dr. Kirby Cordis's daughter, and Kirby is played by Chris Rock. And then Alex Song was also in it, as mentioned, as a friend of Kenny's daughter, the bride-to-be. It, it's basically just, like, a movie. Like, that's the most generous way I can describe it. It's a movie about the week leading up to this guy's 
daughter's wedding and she's marrying uh chris rock's son yeah and rachel pregram is his sister and she's in like the son's sister the son's yeah. sister from his first wife right and well, it's his wife his ex-wife he doesn't have another wife oh He's he just has the ex-wife still single yeah and the ex-wife was the person who had both of his children yeah one of whom is rachel pegram there is a really funny scene where like she was definitely had lines that she was saying to Chris Rock that I think they might have cut out. Uh, where they're like, they, so. Oh, the final. Chris Rock yeah. is like the absent father because he was too busy being a billionaire playboy surgeon. Yes. Yeah. Surgeons can afford private jets now. Um, and so she's all mad at him because like he was never around. But then during like the father daughter dance, they like reconcile with like some funny faces at each other. Essentially, it's like the faces are meant to say like, I'm still mad at you. And he's like, oh, but my daughter, I want to be here now. And she's like, all right, I think I can forgive you. That's what my interpretation of the faces were. But it was really just like a cut, 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 cut. But we did need to spend how much time in that movie just like following around Adam Sandler. I mean, he is like the main character of the movie. <laughs> I know, but he wasn't doing anything. There's two mentions of Ronnie the limo driver. Yeah, but he's not in the movie. Who's like a random Howard Stern. Well, it's his head of security. Um, but even so, yeah. So yeah, it's that movie. If you're Stern fans, it's that one that they spent like three episodes like shitting on Ronnie about. Um, oh, I guess he is in it. Ronnie the limo driver? As himself. Yeah, he's in it for like a half a okay. second in some scene, but I don't actually know what he looks like, so I would not have been able to identify I him. Missed, I missed, totally, exactly. I totally missed that he was in it. They don't like call it out particularly. I mean, that's what Howard was saying. <laughs> is that like, he's completely missable. Oh, wow. He looks very different from what I expected. I expected him to look a lot shorter and creepier. Instead, he just kind of looks like your grandpa. <laughs> oh, um, boy. So, yeah. So, so that's that. Um, oh, and then this is my favorite quote of hers. Oh, yeah. This is from really a good. From interview. And I think that it really speaks to her style of communication. Yeah, this is the same interview so much. that the political quote was mm. from. So the question was, what is the weirdest Twitter interaction you've ever had? Response, hmm, this was less of an interaction, but a man who follows me online only replies when I take talk about my vagina, and he truly looks like the Crypt Keeper. It's always a comment where he doesn't get what I'm talking about, but he must because he only replies to those. It's really cool to be a woman online. He probably jacks off to me, and that's pretty special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. just see her saying that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So with I just that, want to see it. With that, I think it's time for our our predictions. Yeah, our predictions about what we're going to see for what we're going to see. Um, I think that I'll go first. Yeah, yeah, you go as first. tradition for elegance says, hour. Yes, for elegance hour on Wednesday, September twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. I think we're going to learn. Um, well, she mentioned dances mm -hmm. and food, so mm -hmm. I think we're going to learn some very sophisticated food and wine pairings. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to learn how to properly coordinate uh, your bow tie and your pocket square mm. with your blazer. And then um, also how to pick a statement necklace that is appropriate for an event while still making quite the statement. Mm. What do you think we're going to see? Classy penises. Cla so what does that mean? Monocles. What are, are monocles. Little canes. Little ca Oh, how are they holding the little canes? Is With it their balls. Oh, so the balls are like, they can use them. Yeah, they're the prehensile. Balls, they're <laughs> <laughs> yes, prehensile balls. And this is when I learned there was something horribly wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone has prehensile balls. Oh, Horace, boy. didn't you know? No. Um, everyone with balls, they're prehensile. Huh. Um, but yeah, little canes, little monocles, little top hats. Um, and yeah, just the classiest disembodied penises. 
Well, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. Uh, in a couple days on Elegance, Elegance Hour. Elegance Hour. On Chris Gethard Presents. If you stumbled on this somehow and don't know where to watch it, go to chrisgeth.com slash live and definitely check out the Discord where we do the CGP after party. Yeah. The, and also everyone else chats too. And yes. It's really fun. It's really, it's really fun chatting with everyone on the Discord. So please, please join us. Please join us. And also, uh, check out Rachel Pegram in all of the places that you can. She's incredible. I'm so excited to see more things that she does. Oh, wait, we forgot the most important thing, Forrest, of where you're going to be able to see Rachel Pegram. They're starting up again, the National Lampoon Radio Oh, yeah, of course. You're right. Yeah, we didn't list as one of our 15 things because it hasn't happened yet, but she'll be part of the National Lampoon Radio Hour's return. Yeah, it's just like this incredibly famous thing. I know what the words National Lampoon are. Um, and the words radio hour are also words that I understand. And so I assume... So do you want me to tell you yes, what... Yes, please. Okay, so it was a comedy radio show that was created and produced and written by staff from National Lampoon Magazine, which was a spinoff of the Harvard Lampoon, which was the comedy magazine at Harvard. And some of the original cast members on National Lampoon Radio Hour included John Belushi, Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, and Harold Ramis, Mm. i.e. a huge chunk of the first cast of SNL. Mm -hmm. And so it was like the predecessor to Saturday Night Live. Wow. And she's on it. She's part of the return. She's just one of the staff members. It wasn't a super long list also. No, it wasn't a super long list, but there were a a lot of great CGP people. Um, uh, Anna Fabrega. Yes. So here's here. I have the lineup. One of the heads. Okay. No, Joe Firestone is one of the heads. Oh, Joe Firestone. It's Cole Escola, who's from Difficult People. Um, and then it's Joe Firestone, who will see a, be a senior writer. Cole Escola will be head writer, and joining them will be an impressive lineup of comedians from the New York alt comedy scene, including Rachel Pegram, Brett Davis, what? Maeve Higgins, what? Alex English, Lorelai Ramirez, <gasps> Megan Stalter, Aaron Jackson, and Martin Urbano. So Megan like Stalter too? Yeah. So of that list, there's the Latino comedian uh Martin Urbano. Yeah, there's eight people on that list. And Alex English isn't part of it, is he? Yeah. Is oh no, isn't part of CGP, no. are they? No, no, no. No. But like I said, there's like eight people on the list and seven all of them except for Ale- except for Maeve Higgins and Alex English have been, been on involved. the Chris Gethard show or CGP, and they may have been on TCGS at some point. But yeah, like the fact that Brett Davis is one of them is crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited for Rachel Pegram to be out there. The fact that, and the fact, I mean, and Aaron Jackson worked regularly with Josh Sharp, as mm-hmm. we talked about on our Josh Sharp episode. So this is going to be such a good show. It's really cool. She hadn't, she graduated not too long ago, maybe three or four years ago based on when the Hammercats things were coming out. And so it makes me really happy that it, it feels like she's really yeah. getting recognized for and the this, talent that she is. Like and this early. would be a Forever Dog podcast, much oh, like yeah. Mary Houlihan's little podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I love that Rachel's getting recognized because she so deserves it, obviously. Yeah. Like, she's so funny. Really, really funny. Um, yeah, check her shit out. Look out for her on the National Lampoon Radio Hour. And we'll... See you all on Wednesday. See you Wednesday when we're hopefully not sick anymore. It's Wednesday night. It's Wednesday night. No, that's the last show. That's the old show. No, you didn't go. You stayed and watched CGP. Huh. You watched CGP. E. It's the new thing Chris Gethard is putting out, and it's not his show. Did it's Rachel Pegram's show. <laughs> if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably blood. <laughs>